implement waves visa requirements of diplomatic and selected passport holders in Ghana and five other countries. You call me time and say I'm money, and I see you are funny. Security tax force needed to protect the forest reserves from destruction by illegal mining. Here's for former first lady of Ivory Coast, Simone Bagbo, walk out of trial. Hello, good evening. You're live on GBC24 and GTV. It's time for News R. And my name is Soyoko Kwakutre. And I am Ufriwa Dako. The news in detail. The High Court will on Friday, the 28th of this month, give a ruling on the application challenging the disqualification of Dr. Papakwesi Indom as a presidential candidate. Counsel for Dr. Indom, Mr. Ayikwe Otu, argued that the Electoral Commission breached the constitutional instruments which regulate the conduct of the elections. He said the provision imposes a duty on the returning officer to inform presidential candidates of any anomalies on the nomination forms and also afford them the opportunity to make the necessary corrections. He further argued that in this instance, the EC did not give a nomination submission period but rather gave submission dates. Ayikwe Otu claimed that his client was not given a fair hearing but lawyer for the EC, Tadeo Sori, said the application is not properly laid before the court. He argued that Dr. Indom should have come by a petition and not by a writ. Mr. Sori also claimed that the commission gave Dr. Indom a fair hearing when it granted him audience after his disqualification. Aiko Otu hinted that his client will proceed to the Supreme Court for redress if the application fails at the High Court. Outside the court, Hundreds of PPP supporters besieged the premises in solidarity with their disqualified flag bearer. Parliament is to waive visa requirements for passport holders of Ghana with five other countries. The countries are the republics of China, Sudan, Cuba, Turkey and Seychelles. When it becomes effective, holders of diplomatic, official and service passports will not require visas to enter those countries and vice versa. Ghana has fruitful cooperation with China, Sudan, Cuba, Turkey and Seychelles. To further deepen relations between Ghana and these countries, Ghana entered into separate agreements with the countries at different times with the aim of waiving the visa requirements of diplomatic, official and service passport holders. Presenting the motion for the waivers to be adopted, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Madame Hanatete, said the move will bring improved relations between Ghana and the other countries. The move will be mutually beneficial as it does not impose any financial obligations on the parties. The Local Governance Bill 2016, which is in its consideration stage, was also laid before the House. The bill seeks to make local government laws more responsive to the prevailing governance situation in the country. The issue of whether demolition of unauthorized buildings should be the responsibility of the district assemblies or the state was discussed by the lawmakers. The House also debated on the need for Parliament's approval for loans being acquired by the district assemblies. The commercial agreements between Ghana and various construction companies for the design and execution of works at the Kumasi and Tamale airports were also presented to the Finance and Transport Committees for consideration. Sitten resumes on 26 October 2016. The Ashanti Regional House of Chiefs is calling on the Ministry of Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation to create a security tax force to protect the forest reserves from destruction by illegal mining. Forests act as a carbon sink, removing a large proportion of the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and slowing down climate change. For many years, deforestation has been occurring in the country, with tree canopies being removed for illegal mining mining, otherwise known as Galamse. Mr. John Pamang said in its quest to achieve a full-fledged middle-income status in the foreseeable future, Ghana is mindful of its international obligations as a party to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. I wish to kindly urge all of you to support in any little way you can you know, to fight the climate change you know, by planting trees. 
you know, trees are such a basic form of life that if we all make efforts you know, to plant trees, you know, we can make a lot of contribution you know, to address the climate change menace and also take steps you know, to protect our water bodies. In a presentation on Ghana's intended nationally determined contributions, the Director of Field Operations for the Northern Sector, Mr. Opong Bwedi, said the threat of climate change is real as it is felt in every facet of our lives. These effects include food insecurity, water scarcity, deforestation, warmer weather and change in weather patterns. Trigana has launched the Rotary Punctuality and Time Management Project in Accra. The project seeks to change the attitude of Ghanaians towards time. The project also draws attention to the value of punctuality. The conference focused on the theme, the impact of effective time management on national development. A report by Yaira Lawe. Call me time and say I am money and I see you are funny. What shall we call the poor who have all the time yet no open doors to even make a dime? The national launch of the Rotary Punctuality and Time Management Project started exactly at 12.30 p.m. as scheduled, drumming home the need to be punctual. For Rotary, time is one of the most valuable but limited resources available to mankind and it is important that it is utilized to the maximum advantage. Rotary Ghana is using this initiative to advocate change in attitude towards time because the cliché Ghanaman time or African time is no time at all and must be taken out of our vocabulary. Stakeholders of the project unanimously agreed that effective use of time is a prerequisite to socio-economic development. Transformation of a society from a traditional stage to the stage of development cannot be achieved unless the members of that society understand and effectively use time to accomplish complex tasks associated with modernization. Now one may ask, is this the case in our dear country, Ghana? The importance of punctuality is not universal and varies from culture to culture. In most communities in Ghana, and indeed other parts of Africa, time is fuzzy. To a question like, when shall we meet to discuss this issue, you are likely to get an answer such as, oh, tomorrow morning, with no specific time given, which underscores how low we value time. Most of us don't make the most of our time. We fritter time away, which raises the question, why don't we value time as we do any other goods or services? The South Korean ambassador to Ghana, Leo Won King, stressed that being on time requires a bit of an attitude adjustment. Time is like a fused line of dynamite explosives. It disappears as a fused line burns out without any trace, but only ashes left. Therefore, time is a uniquely scarce good to everybody. But the value is quite different, depending on what one does within the same span of time. A past Rotary International Director, Mr. Samo Kujito, officially launched the project's logo and tagline, which goes, Be on time, all the time. For GBC24, Yaira Lawe reporting. The people of Lower Manya Kobo have held their Manya Klo Women's Day celebration. The day which forms part of Manyan Festival celebrations is set aside to celebrate the achievements of the women of Manya Kobo. Wife of the Vice President, Mrs. Matilda Mr. Arthur, encouraged women to prioritize the education of their children. Reports by Theodora Amedeto. That day, meaning the Ideal Woman's Day, was instituted by the corner of Manya Krobo to celebrate women. 
As part of the annual Mayim or Millet Festival celebrations, the day brings together women of distinction to celebrate their achievements and contribution to the development of their various communities. The objective of the day is also to inculcate in the youth the drive of excellence. The corner of Manyakrobo Nene Sakite commended women for the vital role they play in humanity. He prayed for women, especially those of Manyakrobo, to continue to build the home, community, and the nation as a whole. A member of Yukama, who is also the principal of the Presbyterian Women College of Education at Eberi, Dr. Harriet Naki Amui, and the president of Yukama, Madame Ernestina Anafu, have agreed that educating women would help position them to contribute meaningfully to national development. We, as the current leaders of the day, we should look for a sustainable way of uh, getting a framework that will see to the economic growth, the uh, justice, um, exercise the environmental stewardship, so that those coming after us, the youth, when we are no more, they should be able to stand in our shoes and keep things moving. Our role is to serve as role models for other youngsters in town to follow. The wife of the vice president, Mrs. Matilda Mr. Arthur, encouraged the mothers and the women in the community to prioritize education of their children, especially the girls. Young girls, no matter what profession you want to pursue, education is the key. Education opens doors. Education gives us the push we need in life. It is no more a man's world. It is now open to both sexes. And the well-educated, responsible, well-natured, and disciplined can call the shots. The movers and the shakers in the world now include women. Since 2003, 15 women who have distinguished themselves in all walks of life have taken on the Yukama title. Mrs. Matilda Misa Arthur has been crowned the 2016 Yukama. She pledged to help build a library for the community. Theodore Amedetto, GBC 24, Mania Krobo. have brought the Changing Life Transforming Ghana campaign to the Brongahafu region and it was a sight for sore eyes. For four days, the people of the region were consumed with rapturous festivity as His Excellency John Mahama, with his wife by his side, toured the Brongahafu region with his 2016 re-election campaign. James' campaign tour made stops at Yeji, Frank Bassa, Duang, Amanting and Sunyani, where he graced the National Best Teacher Award ceremony. Going to Pechim, Dwaya in Kwanta, Abesim, Longoro, Kintampo, Jema, Busunya, and Techima, where JM and his entourage was swarmed by a massive crowd of supporters at what was dubbed the mother of all rallies. An exhibition of the people's readiness to vote massively to keep JM and the NDC in power. And the general consensus again was. Hello again, my name is Maurice Sobete in business tonight. China and Ghana in the first eight months of 2016 stood at $3.8 billion. Of this amount, China exported $3 billion worth of goods to Ghana, while Ghana exported only $300 million. The Asian giant has therefore pledged to support the country, narrow the trade deficit that exists between the two countries. Economic and Commerce Councillor at the Chinese Embassy, Shai Xinjing, made the pledge when he paid a visit to the Ghana Export Promotion Authority. Chinese Embassy in Ghana has presented some office stationery and equipment to the authority. The Chief Executive Officer of the authority, James Zugatiga, noted that the equipment will go a long way to help Ghana hit the target of increasing non-traditional export to $5 billion by 2019. This small institution for 2015 and 2014 have been able to bring to the economy at least $2.5 billion. And that's no mean achievement, because with 
they are dilapidated vehicles. The personnel are really determined and they are on the field. Without any money, they have they found ingenious ways of um, funding the export school, making the light burning. The Economic and Commercial Councillor at the Chinese Embassy, Shai Jinjing, called on the authority to promote Chinese investment in the country. For the first eight months of 2016, is about uh, 3.8 billion US dollar. We export roughly 3 billion and we import about uh, roughly 8 billion, for, uh, sorry, 800 million from Ghana. So as far as the, uh, the, the balance is concerned, at the moment we are still in, f I mean, we are, it's in our favor. So that means there's a huge task for this agency. Of, of course, from our side, we also try to promote the imports from Ghana. China has over the years supported the Ghana Export Promotion Authority in the areas of training and consultancy. And away from that story, Ego Olaga, a crab brewery's cassava beer brand, has commenced a sustainable development initiative dubbed Ego Farmer Project. The aim is to construct a faro irrigation system and a solar-powered mechanized borehole in three regions of the country to improve food security and livelihood of rural farmers. Second largest brewer in Ghana, engaged in the manufacturing, marketing and distribution of beer, soft drinks and non-alcoholic malt beverages. Established in 1931, the brewery has built popular brands including Eagle Beer, Club Beer, Club Cola, Castle Milk Malt and others using local raw materials. The brewery has initiated the Eagle Farmer Project to improve food security and income for the small-scale farmers who supply the brewery with raw materials such as cassava, maize and sorghum. This saw the inauguration of a 91,000 Ghana CDs newly constructed ferro irrigation system and a solar-powered mechanized borehole for farmers in B. Avega, a community within the Hohoi municipality in the Volta region. This is to offer an alternative to rain-fed agriculture to enable farmers to cultivate their crops throughout the year. The Volta Regional Minister, Helen Intoso, said the project will help in reducing poverty among farmers. Your decision to cite the second of their Eagle Farmer project, which involves an ir irrigation facility as a support to rural farmers to enable them to carry out farming activities during the dry season is also a great opportunity and privilege to our people and we very much appreciate it. The senior brands manager of Accra Brewery, Jerry Goka, said the project has the potential to create jobs for the youth in the area. We believe that they should be able to farm throughout the year without just being limited to the rainy season. By this way, they should be able to improve their livelihoods and their income levels as uh, a people. Similar projects will be inaugurated in Paga Kajelo in the Upper East Region and Huiniso in the Western Region and will benefit over 2,000 farmers. At this point, to go over to the bank market and get latest figures on how the local currency is performing. We also update you on prices of major commodities on the international market.
Let's do insurance news brought to you by SIC Live. Now, Zurich Insurance Group on Tuesday made a tentative offer to buy London-based RSA, formerly Royal and Sun Alliance Insurance Group PLC, in a deal that would value RSA at about £5.6 billion pound sterling. RSA said in a statement that it would be willing to recommend the offer to its shareholders, subject due to diligence and the resolution of setting terms. Insurance News was brought to you by SIC Live. Welcome back to the health segment. The Mental Health Authority has called on government to institute the legislative instrument to ensure effective implementation of the Mental Health Act. The authority says the absence of the legislative instrument makes it difficult to execute mental health activities. Mental health conditions affect a person's mood, thinking and behavior. Mentally ill patients are often neglected by their relatives or considered as outcasts. At Edeba in Wa, the Upper West Regional Minister al Hajja Amidu Suleimani expressed worry about how mentally ill patients are treated in society. I know in some homes, they change them and leave them in their rooms. Nobody cares about their food stamp. They go and just push it and leave it with them and go away. And this Saturday is not good enough. The chief executive of the Mental Health Authority, Dr. Akwesio Say, said the authority has instituted measures to implement the Mental Health Act. However, its implementation is impeded due to the absence of the legislative instrument. The only stumbling block to our implementation, full implementation of the law, is the fact that we don't have the airline in place. Now the airline legislative instrument was spelled out the funding mechanism. And so as part of the wisdom of parliament and the government, they decided that we will find a funding mechanism within the law. And that funding mechanism is the establishment of mental health level. And that will be fully deliberated, fully detailed in the airline. A celebration was preceded by a float through some principal streets of Wa. The participants carried placards with messages such as mental illness is not contagious, no health without mental health, and treat people of mental illness with dignity. The First Lady, Mrs. Lodina Mahama, is appealing to the general public to join in the fight against malaria. She made the appeal when she presented some medical supplies to the Assam Government Hospital in the Bia West District of the Western Region. Malaria continues to account for the increasing deaths recorded in children. Three out of every five children are said to die of malaria every hour. Over the years, one of the most effective preventive measures has been the distribution of mosquito nets. The First Lady, Mrs. Lodina Mahama, said, although a lot has been done over the years, there is still more to be done. Government, the health ministry and other stakeholders are doing all it can to eradicate malaria. We as individuals also have a role to play. Malaria is said to be more deadly than HIV and AIDS, so we must ensure that our surroundings are clean, ensure free flow of water in gutters, and sleep in mosquito nests. Let's join forces to drive malaria out of the country. Ghana needs you, and so does your family. With support from MedShare USA, the Lordina Foundation presented the medical supplies to the Assam Government Hospital to help in the provision of quality health care. The Assam Government Hospital serves a densely populated community in the Bia West District of the Western Region. Inadequate infrastructure and staff continues to be a challenge. Mrs. Mahama expressed the commitment of the Lordina Foundation and the Organization of Africa First Leaders Against AIDS. HIV AIDS offla to continue to organize more medical outreaches and health screening and provide more medical supplies to health facilities to improve health care delivery across the country. The authorities of the hospital were grateful for the gesture. The sun will come out tomorrow, but your bottom dollar. I have a great future. There will be sun. Did 
education is everything ndc is investing in our future vote john mahama vote ndc ndc changing lives transforming god Hello, good evening. Let's update our source from happenings in the world of sports. I'm Theophilo Sampa. The Dagaba Frafra Friendly Fan Games has taken place at the Elwak Sports Stadium in Accra. This year's game stressed the need for peaceful election, emulating the Frafra Dagaba example of friendship. Team Dagaba emerged. The overall winners. The Dagaba and Frafra are two ethnic groups who hail from the Upper West and Upper East regions of Ghana. These two ethnic groups have a unique tradition that has been handed down from generation to generation. The tradition makes these two groups playmates and makes them jokingly call each other slave. In order to maintain this tradition of peaceful coexistence and carry it beyond mere jokes, members of the two ethnic groups within Accra and Tema Metropolis decided to formalize this relationship into an annual fan football match in 1995. And this has now developed into the annual Dagaba Frafra Friendly Games. It has also become an avenue of cultural exposition of the two ethnic groups, attracting all manner of people from businessmen, entrepreneurs, political figures, chiefs, legislators, and top civil and public servants from both regions. This year's edition commemorates the 21st anniversary of the Games and underscores not only its importance as a tool social cohesion and unity but further enhances the peaceful coexistence of the two tribes for sustainable development competed disciplines included volleyball for both men and women women football and men's football for both juniors and seniors there was also a food bazaar and cultural display <laughs> I'll call upon the youth especially that when a politician tells them to go to fight, they should invite the politician to send his own son or daughter to come and lead them. For this year being an election year, nothing could be more appropriate than to use this uh, occasion to promote peace among the people. We want the entire nation to emulate the kind of spirit that exists among the Dagabas and Frafres. So you can see politicians of all political parties that have converged here to join our people to celebrate with them on the occasion of the Dagaba Frafra Friend Games. We are in a political season and politics should not be war. The simple and clear message that the Dagabas and the Frafras tell the whole world, but more importantly Ghanaians, is that we must live together in peace and unity. Prizes were presented to deserving players and teams. Team Dagaba carried the day. It took home a decorated puppy. Let's quickly go to Malaysia where Ghana's representatives at the ongoing International Weightlifting Federation and Commonwealth Junior and Senior Championships. The Black Rings have picked their first gold and silver medals at the championship. Christian Amutu gold and the youth 85 kilogram, whilst Richard Safo picked silver in the 94 kilogram category. They won in both the snatch and clean and check categories. The duo with Forrester or Say have the chance to pick more medals as the competition progresses. Now, former Black Stars player Sam Johnson is worried about the lack of competition for places in the current senior national football team. For you, as he was known during his playing days, remains hopeful that the Stars can defeat the Pharaohs of Egypt in their World Cup qualifier in November. That's all for sports. Adu has promised to bring much development to the Volta region if voted into power. He was speaking on the second day of his campaign tour of the Volta region. 
The campaign team led by Nana Ekufado was in Pando on the second day of tour of the Volta region. They first called on the traditional authorities of the area. Later, Nanado dressed a rally. Enthusiastic supporters welcomed the team with cheers. <laughs> Nanado asked them to vote massively for the NPP in the December polls. He said the Volta region will get its fair share of the national cake when the NPP is voted into power. We are going to revive the national health insurance scheme. We are going to implement the free senior high school. The team's next stop was Tapa Abotuasi. Even though it was late in the evening, party supporters waited patiently to listen to the message from their presidential candidate. Nanado asked the electorate to give him the nod at the presidential election in order to change the fortunes of Ghanaians. Revival of the National Health Insurance Scheme, free senior high school education policy, one district, one factory policy. At a rally at Dambai in the Krachi East District, speaker after speaker called on the supporters to vote out the NDC as a sign of their dissatisfaction towards the current administration. Nanado commended party faithful who turned up in their numbers for their support towards his presidential bid. He promised to improve the Dambai Township roads. <laughs> The campaign team also made whistle stops at Chindari, Borai and Bejamsi. Here, Nanado also interacted with the various chiefs and addressed rallies. In this segment, a peace concert aimed at promoting peaceful elections has been held by the Winneba Youth Choir at Winneba. The wife of the Vice President, Mrs. Matilda Emisa Atha, and other government officials graced the occasion. Another report by Theodora Amedeto. <laughs> The Winneba Youth Choir was at its best and thrilled hundreds of its audience at the Ebenezer Methodist Church in Winneba. Hymns, patriotic songs and renditions of Dr. Ephraim Amu, Spanish and French melodies were high on the Winneba Youth Choir's repertoire. The aim of the peace concert was to ensure that peace prevails before, during and after this year's presidential and parliamentary elections. Politicians from all walks of life were there to support the peace movement. They pledged their readiness and commitment towards peaceful elections.
Politicians from all walks of life were there to support the peace movement. They pledged their readiness and commitment towards peaceful elections. They, however, stressed the need for institutions responsible for the election to be just. What was also visible in the auditorium was the miniature Ghana flags which were waved to endorse the One Ghana project and the unity Ghana needs in this year's election. A former Methodist bishop, Right Reverend Atul Brown, said peace is a prerequisite for development. The wife of the vice president, Mrs. Matilda Misa Arthur, added her voice to the peace message. <laughs> Oswald Okate is a performing poet who fuses music with poetry. He recently represented Ghana at the just ended Ugandan Poetry Festival. He received the award for Pan African Spoken Word Artist of the Year. Oswald was a guest on our showbiz segment. Here highlights. Oswaldo Kainte uses cantoring to perform. Cantoring is the art of combining music and poetry. I have seen your tears in the dead days of yesteryears and harvested the romance of lasting joy in your today. Oswald has performed on many national and international platforms and has shared the same stages with renowned poets such as Professor Kofi Anyedoho, Professor Tukwei Okai, Professor Lade Wosonu, Muta Baruka and Rocky Dawuni. He compared Ghanaian poets to other African countries. When I went to Uganda, I witnessed a performance by basic school students in fact, they enacted a review of a poem. I was judging. I forgot I was judging. <laughs> Where I needed to cry, I cried. Where I needed to applaud, I even forgot I got a clapping. You know, when you go to Uganda, they also feel we are way ahead of them. But in Uganda, I think they do more like I want to do. They okay. do enactment of poetry. Mm. They don't just stand behind the microphone. I just saw, saw some few people stand behind the microphone, but they were doing enactment. They were putting life in the poetry and they were, they, were, they were using poetry as dialogue like in a play. Okay. You also shared light. And it's a wrap on the news for now. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good evening. Good evening.